hello everyone welcome back now in this part of the video we are going to discuss or learn the django architectural framework and also make sense of some of the files we have in our app folder so for instance we have models.py i mean what is models.py what is uh, views.py and things of that sort so as far as the django architectural framework is concerned we are most likely to hear something like mvt or mtv now the M stands for model, the V stands for view, and the T stands for templates. And this is basically there to implement um, what we call separation of concerns as far as software engineering is concerned. Now, the models are usually going to represent our database. So anything that has to do with database, we are going to create a model, okay? So for instance, in the demonstration, you saw me have some products where I send the product somewhere. Now this, or those products, we're going to be added into a database, okay, or a database model. Now, the view handles the logic that needs to be implemented. So as you can see, there's some kind of, or there's going to be some kind of a correlation or relationship between the views and the database. So for instance, if I want to add something onto the database, it is this view business logic that I'm going to write and it's going to talk to the model. So as far as views are concerned, we have um, mainly two types we have the function based views and we have the class based views and we are going to see how some of these things work and as you can see we can make database queries within our views now our templates are going to handle our html files so for instance we are going to have let's say index.html update.html delete.html and all the files i created in the um, design video as far as the um, interface is concerned so clearly this is what happening as far as the Django application is concerned now. So our client sits here and requests okay to the server for keninventory.com. So this keninventory.com is like our project, okay. The domain name. Now this keninventory.com, remember this is a URL, okay. And as I showed you, the URL will be handling the routing. Now this URL will hit the view. Remember, we are seeing that what the view handles what these are functions okay so there's going to be some logical implementation over there now here's the view and depending on what we want to do as far as that logic is concerned we are either going to interact with the model so for instance if you are adding data into the database like i showed you with the product then the view is going to have some kind of logic that says okay you need to add something to the model and over there we are going to have a product model an order model, a profile model. So like I said, these are all parts of the database. So the data you saw me input for the profile, the name and things like that are going to be in a model or in a table. Then there's also going to be some kind of interrelationship between the template because at the end of the day, those things I'm requesting for needs to be rendered back to the user. And as you can see, after everything is done then the view is going to return some kind of a value so depending on what you want to do for instance can inventory.com is going to be our home page so it's going to fetch index.html and index.html is going to be given to the client if the client is an admin the admin can add a product so for instance we'll say can inventory.com slash add products and it's going to hit this view It's going to activate or invoke a particular function and that is going to link up with our model, our database. And this database, I'm adding something to the product, so I need to input or insert something into the product table. And this is how the Django architectural framework is concerned. Now, in between the mix is the URLs. Now, the URLs.py does not get major mention as far as the architectural framework is concerned, but then it's going to handle the routing. But as far as the main architecture framework is concerned, we have the views, the models, and the templates. The views handle the business logic, the model handles the database, and the template handles the HTML files in our application. So there's going to be some kind of a brief description of the whole architectural framework. And we normally, or this is actually done to, once again, uh, let me reiterate, to implement separation of concerns. So as you can see, we have the template and this is going to be rendered on the client side so the client is only going to see the templates 
the HTML files. And at the server side, we are going to have the views that is going to implement the logic, add something to the database. So there's going to be some kind of communication to the database model or delete something from the database, edit something from the database, show me this data, don't show me this data and things of that sort. So clearly with this explanation, let's move on to seeing some of these things work properly. So I'm going to go into my index. Um, I'm going to go into my views.py inside my dashboard app folder. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run some imports over here. So I'm going to say from, from django.http, I'm going to import HTTP response. So I'll import HTTP response and I'm going to define a function over here. So the function is going to be index and index is going to take in a request as a parameter. And I'm going to return an HTTP response of, and this is going to be a string. So I'm going to say this is the index page. All right. So this request, okay. I think I made a mix, mistake over here. So this is going to be request. Okay. So this request, I'm going to show you exactly what this request is going to look like now as far as this view function is concerned remember i made mention of the fact that the views always goes hand in hand with some kind of url because you want to invoke some kind of request through a url and we can actually create a url remember there's a project folder we can come and create a urls over here but then the proper way to handle this is to make sure that every application you have will have its own urls.py so once again i'm going to click on this project folder and i know why i keep on clicking on this because sometimes you can click somewhere and the file may appear elsewhere so i'll click on new file and i'll do urls.py and in urls.py i'm going to run some few imports so i'm going to say from django dot urls i'm going to import path then I'm also going to say from the current directory, I want to import views. So remember, like I said, the views and the URLs are going to work hand in hand. Now I want to have these URLs, sorry, I want to have these views in these URLs so that I can have access to the functions. And that's why I'm saying that from the current, this period or this dot over here, um, shows that we want to work with the current folder. I want to import views. Okay, so now view become a module over here. Now I'm going to say URL patterns and this is going to be a list. So within this list, I'm going to have um, a path and for now, let's say I have index and I'll bring in a trailing slash over here. Then I have views. So I'm calling this view module over here. Now I can access the index function in here and I'm going to give it a name and for the name, I'm going to say index. Now, when I save this, remember we have a request being made over here and we have a view or a URL handling it over here. Now, what we've done over here, as far as things goes, is an internal thing. And we need to inform the project that we are doing some internal routing. Primarily, the project is supposed to do the routing, but then we are doing it internally. Now we need to inform the project. So what I have over here, I have, I, I already have this include function um, imported over here. So what I'm going to do next is, and I'll prefer to use um, the shortcuts. Okay. So I'll simply come and copy this. So I'll do a control C over here and I'll do a control V here. Now I'm going to leave this blank and this is going to be dashboard dashboard.urls okay so what this simply means is now i have a dashboard folder over here and i have some urls in here so i'm informing django that yes i want you to do all the routing for us now let's come back into our urls over here and just leave this blank i'm later going to explain over here so now let's refresh our server or let's restart our server and if we are to go back over here and click on refresh, 
now we are seeing that we have and let me zoom things up over here we can see that we have this is the index page over here now where are we getting this is the index page we are getting this the index page from this http response and it, it is as a result of this view um this index function we have over here now i'm going to create another one and this time around i'm going to call this staff so we are going to have staff and we are going to make a request over here and once again we will return render sorry we will turn an http response i'm moving too fast and i'll say this is the staff this is the staff page all right so clearly these are two different print statements or string statements over here now once we create or the moment we create a view we need to create a corresponding url for it and that's very important so when we come to our project url since this is a list okay as you can see we have the square brackets over here we can put in a comma over here and also creating a path now this path the first um, parameter we are going to state over here is we are going to say staff and we are going to bring in the trailing slash over here then i'll do a comma now uh, i can do views and i can have access to the staff function i just created then i'm going to have a name and this name is going to be staff now this name is not um too much of a requirement now we are going to see how we utilize it later on but then this is what we have and when we come here and come and refresh yes we have this over here now when i do a forward slash staff when i do a forward slash staff now you can see that we have some kind of route happening over here we have this is the staff page and let me come back here to explain exactly what's happening over here now as far as this path is concerned okay these url pathings we are trying to say that whenever you have or you are trying to tell Django that whenever you have a forward slash staff kindly invoke the staff view or the staff function and the staff function is what we have over here and this staff function will take in a request this request is what we've included over here okay so this staff is the request that passes or is the request that's passed in here and Whenever that request is made, we are going to invoke it. So this is what happens. So whenever I do or clear things up over here, this sorry, let me do localhost. And bear in mind, when I do localhost 8000, this is also going to open our um, um, our site for us. Or I can still do the one uh, 127.0.0.1.8000. It's going to be the same thing so this is going to be our index page our index page as we have it over here didn't take any parameter over here because we just left it blank and that's why it is blank over there but if it sees a slash staff then it is going to invoke or going to call the staff this is the staff page over here for us now as far as this view is concerned okay what we have over here can actually be um and let me just cut this so i've cut this and we can actually put in html tag over here so we have an h1 and let me close it over here and inside this i'm going to save this so what we have over here yes we are rendering some kind of data or some kind of text over here but i want to put it in an h1 tag so when i come back here this is the staff page when i refresh we don't see anything over here but then when i come back into our home page and refresh we can see that this is an h1 type because the font looks bolder and things like that we can also apply more styling over here so we can apply some css in here so inside the opening tag of the h1 we can do style and this is equal to and i'm going to have let's say color so color and let me choose red now when i save this and come back and come and refresh over here we are seeing that this is actually working and when we do a forward slash staff you can see that 
we are now rendering the stuff okay over here and this is just a plain HT, um, http response but then we have put this in some kind of h1 tag and we've applied some styling over here so this so this is probably going to be the end of this session so in this session we've actually looked at the views and the urls and i kept on mentioning that the views and the urls work hand in hand now we did some kind of internal routing over here and that's with the index page which is more or less like the home page then the staff first like staff is going to invoke this staff function over here now we also made mention of the fact that this urls.py as far as the one that is in inside the project folder handles the overall routing and you don't need to come and type a lot of things over here all that we need to tell it is that you need to include this dashboard.urls and this dashboard.urls is being handled internally so if you find this video interesting there are a couple of ways you can help me grow my channel kindly subscribe to cambrotech and click on the notification button so that whenever i release a video you'll be notified also share this video with friends and families who will find this content very useful at cambrotech we say learn programming you can do it and also don't forget to ask any question in the comment section if you do have one thank you very much bye bye